What's up runners? My name is Alexandra and I am a beginner runner. Recently, I ran my first half marathon and I have to say, it went pretty good. I wasn't sore afterwards, I didn't get injured in the process, and overall, the race felt really, really good. So there are two things that I realized that I focused on during my training that helped me to get to a successful half marathon and I wanna share those with you today. So I started running because I had an injury and I wanted to get fit and healthy again. I distinctly remember the moment that my doctor handed me a cane because that's how much trouble I was having walking. And it was really hard to know that before this accident, I was a healthy young woman and now I'm being handed a cane and that was just soul crushing for me. At first I was worried about this injury holding me back with running and I have to say it was a blessing in disguise because I was focused on safe and healthy running from the get-go. As time went on, I realized that strength training and nutrition were just as important, if not more, to having a successful first half marathon. So I did a ton of research, and what I found is there are a lot of different strategies to nutrition for runners. I didn't know what to do, so I just started experimenting and trying different things and tried to find what worked for me. So today I'm gonna break it down into pre, during, and post-run nutrition. So I tried three things for pre-run nutrition. I tried fasted, I tried a light breakfast, and then a pretty normal to heavy breakfast. Right off the bat, I knew that fasted running didn't work for me. So I spent most of my training months experimenting between a light breakfast and a pretty normal to heavy breakfast. Eventually, I settled on a piece of toast with some peanut butter and banana and a glass of water, and it worked. During the run, I knew there were two things that I need to think about when to eat and what to eat. So essentially, I just went to the store and grabbed all different types of brands, different flavors, different amounts of caffeine, and I just tried everything. It was important that I chose something that not only my stomach could tolerate, but that tasted good, because otherwise I wouldn't want to eat it. My strategy was to start by taking the gel on a 10K run. My thought process was, okay, so this isn't a super long run, but it does take me over an hour. If a particular gel does make my stomach hurt, I won't be too far from home or too far off. I won't have to cut my run super short. So I will admit, I bought a bunch of different flavors and I actually ended up hating them all. They did not taste good and I was a little bit concerned. But then of course, I did a 5K run and in that little goodie bag of free stuff that they give you to try out was this blueberry pomegranate gel from the brand Goo. I liked it. <laughs> I can't say that I will ever love gels, but I did enjoy this one and I liked it. Of course, the one that I got for free and the very last one that I ended up trying, I liked, but at least I found it. <laughs> and so for me, this is the one I like. It is the blueberry pomegranate flavor. So post-run nutrition was probably the hardest thing to really dial in on. Before I started running, I ate three meals a day and that worked for me. I never snacked, I drank a lot of water and three meals was perfect for me. Now that I'm running, I, I realized that I'll eat breakfast before my run and then essentially I'm burning that entire thing off and I have to eat another meal to replace that meal in order to hit the three meals. It became really overwhelming for me to try to get four meals in a day because my stomach would be full and I didn't want to overeat or overstuff myself because that feeling doesn't feel good and it's, it's also counterproductive. So what I realized is that snacking really helps so that I could sit down at a meal, eat until I'm full, and then have a snack later and still be able to gain those calories back that I had burned. The other thing that I noticed right away is that I wasn't that hungry after my runs and that's because the blood from your stomach rushes to your legs and other parts of your body while you're exercising. Again, I needed to focus on getting the calories back in that I had burned. So what I realized works for me is eating a protein bar immediately following my run while I'm stretching or after I stretch, just within 10, 15 minutes of my run. And then I go about my day and I finish stretching or I change or whatever it is that I need to do. And then I make a full meal. And that helps me to be able to replenish what my body needs without stuffing myself. Overeating or undereating is a common mistake for beginner runners. So I highly suggest figuring out what works for you and how to make yourself most comfortable while you're trying to replenish those calories that you burned while you were running. 
All right, so moving on to the second thing that helped me nail my first half marathon, and that is strength training. I thought running was all about the miles at first, and I was really focused on hitting those miles. And quite honestly, I had heard that strength training was really important, but I kind of pushed it to the back of my mind and tried to ignore it simply because I thought it was boring. Like, I just don't like strength training. I find it, it's not very entertaining, it's not fun, and so I didn't want to do it, so I ignored it for as long as I could. About halfway through my training, I started to see a decline. I wasn't able to hit the miles that I had been hitting previously, and I felt more tired. And that is when I knew I really needed to start incorporating strength training. I started incorporating one to two strength sessionings per week. It's really important that when you pick a plan for a half marathon or a full marathon, that it incorporates strength training. The Run Experience has an awesome half marathon plan that incorporates one to two strength sessions a week. And like I said, it has helped me. And so I encourage you, even if you think it's boring, to give it a shot because it is worth your time. I will admit, I still think strength training is boring and I don't actually look forward to those days. But now that I know the importance of strength training and the role that it plays in my running, I am a huge advocate for it. And I try to get through the training sessions as best as I can and try to enjoy myself because I know the benefits. And quite honestly, it doesn't actually take a lot of your time. There are plenty of ways that you can do your strength training efficiently and not add too many hours onto your training schedule. Over My Shoulder is the first video from the run experience that I myself as a community member watched and was hooked. I subscribed, I followed along with the community, and I hope that that video helps you too because it certainly helps me.